Alrighty, so we are in our uh, go path and in uh, the directory that we need to be. Um, right. If you don't know anything about Go, I recommend you to w watch Derek Banner's video and I will link it below and maybe show in the screen. Um, he does these like really awesome videos like uh, learn this or that language in uh, one hour or in one video or something. Um, obviously you can't learn the entire language but you will learn syntactual basics and conceptual basics that will really help you. So we will create a main file um, and let's, uh, let's open that. Alright, so um, the main file is always from package main and you need a main function as an entry point into your application. All right. So uh, for now, what we will do is, um, yeah, create an infant for loop. We're going to set up something like a REPL where we can just um, enter a line of code and have that executed by our um, uh, program. So um, to do that, uh, I have to do a little bit of research because I, I always forget. Um, Golang input from S standard in. Um, right on. So this is uh, how we can solve that. So that becomes uh, a reader becomes uh, for, um, a buff IO reader. Uh, and we pass uh, standard in to read from, so that will be our terminal. Um, we can. Uh, oh, it's hard to talk and code at the same time. Make a little prompt. Uh, makes it easier. And then um, we can take our text uh, and error. We want to probably handle the error. It's probably nicer. Um, so read a string until we encounter a new line or an enter key. Uh, yep. And then for now we can just uh, print our text to the console. Uh, so we need to import a few packages. I'd set Vim up to do this automatically, but it's not working yet. Uh, I know why, actually. Um, we need to change something in our Vim config. Um, and we need Thumped as well. And we need Buff.io. Uh, right. That should probably work. Uh, go on main. Nope. Oh, it doesn't like that, because uh, it's not correct. Um, that should actually be um, uh, insert new reader. And we need to handle the error. I said handle the error and then I didn't do it. So uh, if the error is not nil, I need to get used to this keyboard again. Um, then we can just, uh, well, for now we can actually just panic uh, with the error. That should do it. Yep, we get our prompt. We type something, it's echoed back. Okay, that works. Right on. So, now that we have that, we basically wanted this little uh, REPL here. And we can start actually uh, passing uh, lines of code to Alexer. It's just like we did in the Python version. Um, basically, we uh, we need to create a new package, which we're going to call Lexer. So let's create a new di directory and call it Lexer. Um, actually, for now, I'm just going to put it all in a, in a package called Boogie. So in here, in this directory, we're going to uh, create a file called lexer.go. Alright, um, this plugin I use automatically puts some stuff in, but we won't need that. Um, so this is now called the package boogie, because we're in that directory. And then we create a new type called lexer, and that will be a struct. 
uh, I already know that we're going to need a channel uh, uh, of string, of the type string. And um, let me just write this constructor here real quick. Uh, and so uh, it wants to return a reference to Lexer and it wants to get a channel of string and then set that field in our uh, struct. Now this is completely wrong. In, in, like that. That should be fine. So now we've created a package uh, boogie and put a lexer uh, type in there that currently only has a constructor that sets a channel. So the reason we're doing that the reason that we are doing that is um, the channel will be used as a communication pipe into the Lexa. So what the, the REPL, the main loop, will do, so if we jump over to the right here, um, right now it's just um, reading that string from uh, standard in and then printing it to the console. It will actually uh, send it to that channel to the Lexa, and the Lexa will just be an infinite loop running uh, as a go routine. So it will be completely parallel from whatever is happening, uh, which is kind of nice. It's, it's a kind of cool concurrent way of working. So um, what we need to do is uh, create a Alexa in channel. And we have to make that channel. So that will be a channel of type string. Everything is really strongly typed in go. So, you know, everything needs a type. Uh, at that point, what we can do is uh, create a new lexer uh, with our constructor. So since that is in the package boogie, uh, we need to call it on the package boogie and pass that uh, lexer in channel uh, like it's expecting us to. Uh, so we should actually really work on uh, having the automatic import set up. Um, Yeah, for now I'll, I'll just do it manually. Um, so we need to import the boogie package, but because it lives locally on our system, it needs to come from the go path. So um, we will type github.com, uh, the ape machine, uh, and it lives in boogie, and then because that's nested in there, uh, boogie again. So right. Uh, now, this is red because we're not using our lexer yet, but what we can actually already do is um, change this line. So, um, change, um, let's see, uh, we can say lexer dot in uh, the text, right? It will accept that because the channel is of type string. Um, I think there might be a little bug inside the plugin because this should now no longer be red because we're using it uh, here. So what we can do is just uh, close that and let's open it again. I'll open it here. Why not? Uh, main. So it is no longer red. Okay. Um, yeah. Now that we're sending it there. Uh, we're still not consuming that channel in any way. So let's jump to the right here and then uh, jump to the end of the file and attach a new method on our uh, lexer type. So to do that, um, we have this syntax here that says like uh, func and then first you define where you're going to um, define it on. So on the lexer type and then uh, the name of the function run and then you could have it return like anything but for now, I just don't even want to. Um, and this, all that does is start another infinite for loop. And what it does is well, it will take um, items from that in channel and then do something with it. For now, we'll just consume it by sending it to an uh, anonymous variable. Um, Otherwise, it won't be happy that we allocate it and don't use it. Go is very strict in that way. So actually, what we can do um, to sort of show that this is working, 
we can actually just uh, print the message over here, uh, meaning that we will have to import font. Um, oops. This keyboard is way too icky. Uh, oh, of course, um, we have to get our syntax right. Uh, that's probably okay. Um, it's probably the same bug again. Uh, so now that we are doing that, we actually need to start our run function as a go routine because that's what we said. The Lexa will be an infinite loop running in the background. So to do that, we just say go Lexa run, right? So now we can, uh, yes, go run main of go. We get our prompt, we do test. It behaves a little bit different now because uh, because things are now running in parallel. Basically, the Go routine is printing faster than the or printing a little slower than the uh, the prompt is being uh, shown. So now the prompt is the prompt is printed first, and then the result would it should be the other way around. But that's fixable, and it's also because this is not entirely what we want to be doing in the first place um, it's just to show that it, it, it does work right okay so now that we are doing that uh, we get an entire string in in the lexer right so that's what's happening here so we could do something like uh, maybe I don't know define some sort of a, a process function or something you know Let's keep it like really simple, really dynamic and not think about things too much because refactoring is an option and we will do that. So what we can do now is like, okay, our message comes in as a string, right? Or maybe we should actually rename that to LOC, line of code, because that's really what it is. Um, so while we're doing that, um, we don't have to print anymore actually. We will now just say process uh, line of code, right? And in fact, why not also um, send back an error? So I can show you that to return a type, you can do it uh, like this. This is the syntax. And then you, because you allocate the error, you have to handle it, otherwise Go gets upset. So here we can, throw another panic. I, I just want to feel fast and just panic, you know. Um, all right. So um, this needs to actually return something, otherwise Go will get upset. Um, okay, so yeah, I am going to uh, refer to a project over here that I did a while ago. Um, let's see, it is called um, the Obvious Skater. And it is actually a um, obfuscator for the Yi framework, which uh, is a PHP MVC framework. Um, what I want to do is get my parser function here because I'm going to borrow a little bit from that and the way I'm gonna do that is I'm already at line uh, that's not entirely gonna work because I want to go character by character but I thought I was doing that here somewhere oh I am I am okay so yeah We can continue. Um, what I'm doing here is I, I have that line of code and I want to loop over each uh, character. If you're coming here from having seen my um, PH, no, my Python version of this, then uh, you would know that I prefer doing um, the parsing of, of, of code this way. Um, character by character and just switching a state machine over using regular expressions and uh, there are reasons for that. Uh, mostly that regular expressions are just not that great at doing this um, and you get less freedom. So 
here I, I, I loop over each character in that line of uh, code, in that line. The difficulty is uh, that at the moment it will be a um, string, no, a rune, and uh, that's not going to work for me. I, I want to I wanna work with strings. So I will just convert it to uh, a string. Uh, by saying, um, actually, what I will do uh, is I will make a new private field on this uh, called uh, current char, right? And that will actually be a string. And then what I can do is uh, over here, I can say um, lexer dot uh, current char equals the string of our room. So now we're converted back to string. Um, maybe not super efficient, but for now I, I, I want to work this way. Um, I, I haven't experienced that this is super slow, but um, it will be at the scale of like large quantities of, of uh, code. Uh, so the next thing is that we have to define some sort of a state machine. Mm. To do that, I'm going to use an enum, um, which is also something I did over here. And I will borrow again a little bit from that, because uh, having to work in many different um, languages, it it's kind of escaping me all the time, like what the, the syntax is and all that stuff. Like, I do work a lot in Go lately, and, and I'm happy with that. So, uh, yeah, to uh, make a uh, new state machine, I'm going to first create a type of, um, and I'm going to call it a context state, and then uh, give that an integer um, as type. Oh, and that means what I can do is I can make a, a, a constant here, or a, a range of constants, and I can call one start, and give that the context state type, and then um, equal that to iota. And then just means that um, any other constant that I uh, put underneath here now will just uh, keep uh, counting up from zero. So this start state will basically, the underlying type will be an integer and it will be initialized as zero. But um, if I want to make a uh, uh, another context that is maybe like, uh, I don't know, like keyword. Then all I have to do is this, and that will just be uh, one. It'll make more sense. So now that I have that, um, I can actually make a uh, field here. And I will call it a current context. And it will be of a context state. I want to do that. Um, I was considering calling this context, but there is actually a context package already. Um, and I don't want to conflict with that. Not that I would, but... Alright, so uh, I'm going to go back to uh, this bit. And right on. So after having done the conversion back to string. What I what I want to do is um, create my state machine switcher. So I will make a switch on um, on the lexer uh, current context, right? And what I can do now is say like, okay, so let's say that my current context is start, right? Underlying the type will be integer, so zero, but this is a nice syntactical sugar to, to do the same thing. So in, in this case, I, I want to be doing something. And that is, uh, let's think. So well, I'm going to make a comment here saying do, do something, because we're getting ahead of ourselves now. Um, we haven't ever really defined any type of uh, language. So, for instance, um, if we go back to our main file, 
yeah, I mean, all we do, all we're doing is reading a string, right? So what we want to be doing is if we uh, if we run this, oops, uh, undefined process and import it, not use from. Okay, you see how tricky Go can be. Um, so we're not we're not printing anymore, so we don't need that. And then also, uh, I should have done. Uh, Lexer the process because you know the uh, process method is defined on the type and the type has a uh, local variable called Lexer so and here as well so we need to um, use that to call process it, it does make sense um, apologetic for go uh, go run oh this keyboard man uh, so we want to do something like uh, respond to the word, for instance, um, quit. Like now that does nothing. Like quit is not a keyword. Uh, so we need to start making it a keyword. Um, the way we will do that um, is uh, in our lexer. So yeah, um, the naive way to do that and we are going with the naive way for now, is to start um, making something called uh, keywords, which will be a map of strings or a slice of strings. So that will be an array of type string, right? I will m mostly call it array. Um, I've decided um, not to Keep calling things by their correct names, like in Go they're called slices, in uh, Python they're called lists, I believe. It gets confusing, and also I know that there are subtle differences between the things, but effectively this is how I use them as arrays, right? So, okay, um, so we need to make an uh, array of type string, and we we give it zero. Um, actually, we don't even need to do this. Um, what we can do, oops, keywords, is just uh, immediately put in the values as well. So we said that quit was become gonna be a keyword, right? So I'm most likely gonna convert everything to. Do I want to be precise with... That's a good question. Do I want to accept um, capitalization as a core feature of my language or do I just want to have it not be dependent on that? I kind of want to make it not dependent on capitalization, so... Hell yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna leave it like that. Okay, so at this moment, uh, what we want to do is we want to create a buffer, um, which is an uh, an array of string, or we can just keep a normal string. We'll keep it a normal string. Um, the reason why I do that is because we're going over things character by character. Um, we need to start making some sort of a detection mechanism. So what we can do is here in the start uh, context, which we are in, uh, we are not actually, but we will be once we say um, no. Yeah, so current context is start. So when this is initialized, um, we are at the start context. Uh, now what we can say, the buffer uh, plus equals um, lexicurcher. That should work. Um, now we're keeping a small growing buffer of all of our characters. And we can do something like um, 
Yeah. So we, we will need a little function um, that can compare uh, let me just see where I, where I put that this is gonna I think it's in here this this code base is structured really weirdly but this was my first real go project so I was just trying um, to do some things yeah string and slice that's that's a method we need to uh, create so uh, let's create a function on our lexer this is going to move at some point because this we will need this a lot more and it shouldn't be dependent in this package so string in slice accepts a string and a list of uh, strings right so it returns a boolean true or false and it will return false by default it will return true by default. I like to consider the happy path. Um, so yeah, so. No, this will return false, happy path or not. Uh, it will loop over that list, the second um, variable we're passing into this function. And then what it will do is it will say if um, the string that we're passing in. No, the string. If 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 an item from this list uh, equals the string we're passing in, then return true. That means that we found um, that in our list. Now, the only problem is that our list will have uh, capitalization. And our string does not. So what we need to do is, um, I think that lives in string convert. Um, we have to uh, convert the string. Uh, I think that's the, what the package is called. Um, we can just guess it. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. Um, yeah, so what we can do now is say like, hey, if um, handler the buff, no, that's that's not correct. Like, if handler dot string in slice handler dot buff and handler dot keywords as the list. Mm hmm. Now we can set the uh, handler dot uh, current context to keyword, right? Meaning that um, now we can actually test for that. So um, yeah, do do something, right? That should probably work. Uh, no. Why am I calling it a handler? I'm 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 in work mode. Okay. Um, okay. And string convert also doesn't seem to be defined. Okay. So uh, changing word and uh, laxer. Then the next, the next, the next, and the next. That should clear that up. Um, and over here, uh, no, uppercase string, strings, sure, good enough. Uh, so um, strings, and then uh, strings. String in slice, and that needs a capital S. Right on. All right, so 
it's kind of working. Um, we're going to take a break.